Welcome! In our lesson today, we will be practicing the skill of calculating atomic mass. We have our notepads out in front of us. The notepad opened up looks to be about page 7, where we left off a little bit ago in the previous lesson. We notice that we have three vocabularies that we will de be defining, and then two practice calculations in which we will be using the natural percent abundance for isotopes to come up with what's called the atomic mass. So one of the tools that we'll need out is called the scientific calculator. And if you don't own a scientific calculator, perhaps you'd like to do what I did. I put into the Google search bar scientific calculator, and this is the very thing that came up, and it works perfectly. So that might be the easiest thing to do. The other thing you'll see me is uh, pulling out my periodic table, so I have that handy as well, along with the note pack. So the first set of notes is going to go through um, two review vocabulary terms and then one brand new one. The first two are brand are, uh, review terms called atomic number and mass number. So let's start slow and put into the notes our definition, again for the second time writing it in there I'm sure, the atomic number, the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom for that particular element. The number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. Remind yourself, where do we find those on the periodic table? They are the whole numbers that just increase by one unit from left to right. Hydrogen 1, helium 2, lithium 3, it gives the atom its identity. Phosphorus 15, it has 15 protons and so forth. The number of protons in the nucleus of an atom, its atomic number. The mass number, again a review term, is the protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. And so when we were practicing something known as standard isotopic notation, those two vocabulary terms were the numbers that we used to develop the Bohr model or the simple solar system models. So let's just suppose any element x, whatever the symbol might be, we know that the mass number is placed high as a superscript to the left of the symbol and we know that the atomic number is placed low kind of as a subscript to the left of our symbol. The important thing here is to note that the mass number are always whole numbers because they are adding together the components of those subatomic particles called protons and neutrons. But now we're introducing the next term called atomic mass. The weighted average of the naturally occurring sample of the element, all of the varieties of isotopes averaged together this is what, and I will put this back up there, I promise, but this is what we find on the periodic table, isn't it? Notice how there are decimal places on the periodic table. Boron, 10.81. Where does that decimal come from? It comes from averaging all the varieties of the different types of atoms of boron. Take a look at, golly, Chlorine, 35.45, where does that decimal come from? It comes from averaging all of the isotopes of that particular element together. So this, of course, has decimal places. And it is what is truly found on the periodic table. The mass number is a whole number found by adding protons and neutrons. The atomic mass has decimals and it's found by averaging all the varieties of the different isotopes of a particular element and placing that weighted average onto the chart. So let's take a peek at what one of these might look like. Atomic masses can be calculated given the natural percent abundance of each of those particular isotopic forms of an element. For instance, in nature, oxygen has three different varieties of isotopes, three naturally occurring varieties. The first isotope has a mass of 15.995 atomic mass units. 
and a relative abundance of 99.759%. The second isotope has a mass of 16.995 and a relative abundance of 0.037%. You can clearly see that first variety of oxygen by far in nature is the most abundant kind of oxygen atom but there are two others that contribute slightly to their average. The third with its weight of 17.999 AMUs and a relative abundance of 0.204. Let's calculate all the averages together, the average atomic mass from the isotopic data. We'll circle our final answer and we'll include the unit here. We know that atomic mass units are the units that we weigh atoms in. These problems are not difficult. Let me just model one with you the first time. The information from that first isotope with its weight of 15.995 atomic mass units, I'm going to multiply that by its percent abundance, which I know is 99.759%. And see what I'm doing? I'm placing my percent over 100 to remind myself that literally a percent sign means parts out of a hundred parts. So I'm just helping myself remember that I have to slide the decimal two spots left to get a percent back into its decimal form. So for our first isotope, I'll call that isotope number one, we have that following information recorded in its own special parenthesis, 15.995 atomic mass units times its relative abundance. The relative abundance, 99.759% placed over 100 will move that decimal for me. The second isotope had a mass of 16.995 atomic mass units. We're going to multiply that by its relative abundance, which was not much, right? 0.037% parts out of 100 parts is the term percent. And so again, I'll just show that this information is coming to me from isotope number two. And we had a third isotope, and I'm running out of room here, so I'll just bring it down here. So I'm going to record the information from isotope number three inside its own bracket, and I'll go back to red to do that. The third isotope with its mass of 17.999 AMUs times the percent abundance 0.204 set over 100 to remind myself that's what percent means, parts out of 100 parts. And we're ready to calculate. So I'm going to break this screen, kind of bring this over here, and what I'd also like to do is to pull up the calculator at the same time so we can also practice the key sequence together. So here's the numbers that we need to hit together. But I want to show you the key sequence. Very vital that you hit this together with me to get the sequence of keystrokes correct. Alrighty. So in the first isotope, I'm going to put it inside of a parenthesis. So first thing I'm going to do is hit the parenthesis. I'm going to hit 15.99, oops, 15.995 its average atomic mass there, times the relative abundance, 99.759 divided by 100. And I'm going to close that parenthesis so there's all the information pertaining to the first isotope. Plus, and let's do the same for the second. Inside the parenthesis, we place its weight of 16.995 times its relative abundance, 0.037 divided by 100, taking that percentage back into the decimal form, plus, and let's do the same for the third. We have a third isotope that weighed 17.999 times its relative abundance of 0.204 over 100. So each isotope separated by the others inside of a parenthesis and we hit equal. Here I get 15.9994516. How many decimal places should we record? Well notice here I have three decimal places in the problem given to me in the data, three decimal points for each of those isotopes. I want us to learn to do that as well. So for my final answer I'm going to record 15.999 
AMUs and circle that as my final answer. There we go. I can make that a little larger for you. What we found based on averaging the first isotope with the second with the third, we took a hundred samples and out of a hundred samples of the oxygen, 99.759 of them came from oxygen 16 and so forth. So if we were to compare that value to what we found on the actual periodic table, and again if I just make this large, see what we find for oxygen? 15.999. Very good feedback that what we just calculated was indeed correct. The final answer, weighted averages giving us the answer here. Let's try another. You're doing good work. This example talks about carbon with two naturally occurring isotopes. The first isotope of 12.000, its percent abundance 98.89%. So in nature, 98.89% of all carbons weigh 12 AMUs. But there's a second variety, a second type of isotope of carbon that has a mass of 13.003 AMUs and a relative abundance of 1.11%. Let's calculate the average. So inside of a bracket, let's place what we know about the first isotope with its weight of 12.000 AMUs its relative abundance of 98.89% parts out of 100 parts. Isotope number one. We'll add that to the information we know about the second isotope. 13.003 AMUs times its relative abundance of 1.11 over 100 parts. We're ready to calculate. So again, I'll make the screen just so we can do both at the same time. Clear out this previous problem, and here's what we have. 12.00, I forgot my parenthesis, start over. 12.000 times 98.89 over 100 close that parenthesis. Add it to the information from the second isotope. 13.003 times its percent abundance of 1.11 over 100 and close that parenthesis. We'll hit equal. We're going to include the same number of decimals as we had in the story problem. 12.011 are the three decimal places that match the data given to me in the problem. I'll include my unit, the atomic mass unit, and I'll circle my final answer as asked for. You know, we're also asked to practice a previous skill and draw simple Bohr models of each of these isotopes. Knowing that the first isotope, carbon, had a mass number of 12, what is the atomic number? Well, we're going to have to look that up quick with our periodic table. Let's make that big so we can see it clear. See where carbon is? The atomic number 6. Oh, by the way, look at 12.011. That's nice feedback to know 12.011. We must have hit that correctly. But I had to pull up the periodic table to find the atomic number of carbon. And notice here, the second isotope, now with a weight of nearest whole number of 13, its standard isotopic notation would use a mass number of 13 over 6. And these are the two isotopes we're being asked to draw, a simple solar system known as Bohr models. So in our first simple model, we'll place six positive protons, the very definition of the atomic number. Both carbons have six positive protons. What's different about them is the number of neutral neutrons. Knowing the total mass of the first isotope is 12, it must contain 12 total pieces. So 12 minus 6 leaves me a remainder of 6 for the neutron number. And 13 minus 6 leaves me a 7 for the number of neutrons here. 
But we also know that atoms are neutral, so the number of protons matches the number of electrons always as atoms are neutral. And I'll just put that out in a ring here. First energy level has a maximum of two electrons and then it's full. And the carbon will have four more to give me the total of six. And each one of these isotopes has the same electron distribution. Two in the first, four more in the second. And there we have our standard notation. Excellent. You know, in the note pack, what we've done so far, we've wrote down our definitions of our vocabulary terms, atomic number, mass number, and atomic mass. We calculated our first example problem of oxygen with its three naturally occurring isotopes. We practiced with carbon with two naturally occurring isotopes, and we even drew in the simple Bohr models down here. Your next step is to try one and then another. The first one you'll try is for nitrogen with two naturally occurring isotopes, so you'll have two brackets to add together. And then in your next example that you'll try on your own is for the element zinc, and it's a doozy. You've got five naturally occurring isotopes, so five different brackets that you'll be adding together. It's not challenging, just a little bit longer type of problem. And when you're ready to give yourself feedback, there is a link that I want you to check your work with. Make sure that your work that you've tried is perfect and correct.